Hello, welcome back to Turn and Burn UK. Today I'm going to turn a nice piece of ash that I've got on the lathe here. Um, we're going to make a uh, maybe a wobble bottom bowl, but the outside of the bowl is going to be heavily scorched and then the grain is going to be picked out with a chestnut um, gilt green. Not too sure which colour we're going to go for yet, but we'll we'll see when we get to it. So take the corners off flatten the base, make it round, and then we'll go from there. Turn the speed all the way down, stand out the way. So we're running out at 750 RPM. Just going to take the corners off. Side bevel, push that into the centre. You have to do a full cut. Andy recorded over an hour and a half of uh, video footage producing this bowl, and even then, he didn't capture every element of it. So, what I've done is I've um, just sped up some areas involving sanding or if there is a long turning process especially with shaping the bowl we have other videos out there with more in depth footage um, especially some of the earlier ones where you if you want to see this process uh, you may gain um, a little bit more insight into it from watching those but uh, in the meantime just enjoy this video say so i have uh, put it back to normal where he's explaining certain parts of his process so hopefully that will help you. Thanks again. So you just stop the lathe. If you haven't already, why not give us a like, a subscribe and bang on the notification bell. It's all free and it helps us with our YouTube channel. Right, quick sharpen. Okay, so back's been sanded and rubbed over with a, a wire brush. This is a, a liming brush you can get from Chestnut, and all that does is just open out that soft summer growth, uh, which is going to be where we put the put the um, 
the gilt cream. So that's that's what I was doing. That's ready to go. I'm just going to do the inside now. Unfortunately, one of the screws snapped off on the faceplate when I was taking the faceplate off. So we were slightly delayed while we removed the screw. So what we're going to do now, we're going to flatten this surface because as you can see it's a bit wonky. Get that surface flat, then we'll hollow, finish the inside and then we'll be ready for burning. Speed down, out the way, turn on. This is a bevel rubbing push Still a little bit there. Some people don't like using scrapers, but a freshly heart sharpened scraper, especially a heavy duty one like this, just to make a final pass across the bottom of the bowl, really makes a difference. It's a final pass just to put a small angle onto the top of the bowl so that it brings the eye into the centre of the bowl. So we're all sanded, and now we will, I'll put some sanding sealer in there. Won't sanding seal the outside yet because we're going to do something else to that. We are only going to do the outside, so the rim can be sealed.
because I want to keep the rim natural. There we go. So that's the out, that's the inside of the bowl done. I will wax the inside of the bowl with a microcrystalline wax, but I will do that using the buffing mops at the end. So that's that finished. Just got to give it a quick de just de nib the um, just de nib the sanding sealer. And that's us done. You can see with proper sanding prep going down through the grits, cleaning between, you've already got a shine just from the application of the sanding sealer. Once you put a wax on there, it's going to look absolutely stunning. Right, so. finished the inside I've just put a little bit of masking tape around the rim here so that when I'm holding it on the cold jaws I don't mark the rim or the inside of the bolt now I've spoken to B and she said that she reckons that this would look better with a smaller foot rather than a wobble bottom so I'm going to reduce the foot size take the chucking point out of the center um, and then this will be good to ebonize and we'll use some ebonizing lacquer from chestnut products um, and then finish with a with a, uh, a coloured wax to highlight the grain. But first, we'll just take the take the base off. Record Power recommend that you don't go any faster than 600 RPM when using these jaws. So, due to the shape of the inside of the bowl, I'm not going to take the tail stock off to to trim this off. So we'll take as much timber as we can away with the tail stock presented and then we'll clean it up afterwards. Right. That's a bigger tenor than I would normally leave on there, but I won't take that off just yet. We'll do some sanding first, I think. Okay, so we've sanded the bottom and I'm going to give it a quick coat of cellulose sanding sealer. Once the sanding sealer is dried off, I'll just denib it and then we're going to use some ebonizing lacquer on there. So the bowl has been sanded. We've used the, the um, liming brush to open the grain. Just going to put some sanding sealer on. So. We want to work from left to right, 
making sure that all the bowl is covered and then we just leave that to dry won't take very long so just denib that and then we'll use the have an idea like just got to give it a good shake. Now it's worth putting a glove on or using a uh, one of these triggers to spray the uh, ebonizing lacquer because otherwise you end up with a black finger and we'll spray it in exactly the same way as we sprayed the sanding sealer light coats Make sure you do this in a well vented area. And that's it we can just leave that to dry I think there's a little bit of a little bit around the uh, top bit there that didn't get covered and if you're in a hurry you can always give it a tickle the hair dryer so that's nice and dry now so the choice of finish tonight is by Libron Yeah, Libron and it's the verdigris wax and it's this fantastic greeny colour I have to thank Mark Sanger for this one as he posted a hollow form that he'd been working on um, using this colour I thought I've got to give that a go I'll put Mark Sanger's details in the bottom so that you can uh, you can check out his work because it's awesome. When are you doing the meeting? Uh, at the table. Okay. When? Uh, half seven. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to put this on and then I'll come in. Okay. All right. Um, so the wax is the wax is this beautiful colour. As I said, I'll put the details of I'll put Mark's details in the bottom. And then we just rub it on and the wax will work its way into the grain. You 
you don't have to use cloth you could use a brush you could use your fingers but if you're going to use your fingers make sure that you've got a gloves on and it's just just a case of working that wax into the grain it's quite hard wax it's not like the um it's not like the the liming wax that chestnut do which is a bit softer Once you've applied the wax, you can take it off using either some lemon oil or you could use some wood wax 22. That just helps lift the wax out of the out of the grain. There we go. So you don't, it doesn't take a lot. So I'll start with some lemon oil. I move, might move over to some wax afterwards. You can finish it with a clear wax just to protect the lip on. There we go. You see how the lemon oil just through the remaining wax. You can see I've just put some masking tape around the rim so that it's not so that you get that nice clean transition between the top and the Up on the outside of the bowl. There we go. Now uh, the lemon oil dries quite quickly. It's quite a thin oil. You can rub the excess off with a towel. Like so. And then you can apply some wax. You can use the wood wax 22. I quite like the microcrystalline, so we're going to use some microcrystalline today. There we are. I recommend that you leave it for 10 15 minutes before you. Buff the microcrystalline off. So 
So that's what we'll do. So that's the finish that you get. I'll just leave that for the uh, solvent to vape and then I'll buff that off um, and uh, you can see the end result in the following photos.